Marinette rubbed her hands together in a vain attempt to keep them warm. She was waiting outside on her balcony for Adrian, but the snow that had started at lunchtime hadn't stopped. It had stayed steady all afternoon and all evening, and now there was a good coating on her balcony. She should probably go and at least grab her scarf, if not a coat as well, but she didn't want to miss Adrian's arrival, although she knew he'd berate her for standing out in the cold for him, but she wanted to. She always greeted him like this. Although it was probably for the best, they always met up when it had gone dark, so Adrian couldn't see her blush when he kissed her hello. This afternoon when he'd walked her back to class had been bad enough. Not that she'd hated it. She loved it when he held her hand, but he seemed largely shameless about it. Marinette always noticed the glares Lila sent her way whenever Adrian did it, but Marinette also couldn't care less. It seemed with every passing day, she was the one Adrian Agress wanted, not Lila Rossi. Mary? What are you doing so in the cold? The teenage girl jumped a little in surprise. She had been so lost in her thoughts that she hadn't seen or heard Cat Noir arrive on her balcony. But now Adrian was here, she was already blushing, and he hadn't even kissed her yet. Calling her Mary certainly didn't help. He only ever called her that when they were alone together. Oh, I just... waiting for you, she said with a smile. Cat Noir didn't reply, just stepped towards Marinette and cupped her cheek. Her eyes fluttered shut, expecting him to kiss her, but it never came. Your skin feels frozen, he said. She opened her eyes and bit her lip when she saw how worried her kitty looked. The skin above the mask between his eyes was furrowed in a frown, and his cat ears had drooped slightly. I'm fine, Marinette said, reaching up and holding his hand to her cold cheek. I promise I am. Besides, you're here now, so we can go inside. She let go of his hand and stepped away to climb back in through the hatch, but before Marinette could even kneel down, Cat Noir grabbed her hand and pulled her back to him. His other hand went back to her jaw, his closed fingers so gentle against her skin, and then he kissed her on the cheek. Did you think I'd forgotten? Marinette shook her head, not trusting her voice right now. Come on, let's go inside. I can't have you getting cold. She nodded, blushing even harder, and climbed back through the hatch. Immediately, her breath fogged up in front of her face, highlighting just how cold it had been outside in comparison to her bedroom. Tiki and the rest of the Kwamis had been right to stay warm in the miracle box. Marinette shuffled along her bed and down the ladder, and Count Noir followed soon after, and in the light of her room, she finally noticed the DVD case he had tucked under his belt. Oh, what film did you bring? It's called Nativity. Felix said it's his favourite Christmas film. It's British. Shall I set it up, Mary? She blushed again, but tilted her face down so he couldn't see it. Why do you call me that? You only say it when we're alone. Cat Noir hummed and went over to her. Then with one crooked finger, he placed it under her chin and tilted her blushing face up so they made eye contact. Would you rather I call you princess again? Her blush got even worse, remembering he'd called her that on her birthday. It was probably for the best for her mental health that she hadn't known it was Adrian at the time, because if she had, she'd have probably fallen off the Eiffel Tower due to the shock. I still can't believe you called me that, she murmured, unable to turn her face away. His green eyes narrowed. Why? Because you're Adrian Agrest. The good mood she'd been in seemed to fade the moment those words left her mouth. Five minutes ago, she was certain Adrian felt something for her over Lila. But every time he was here, doubt just seemed to fill her. He was Adrian Agrest. Why would he have feelings for her? Cat Noir let his hand slip away from under Marinette's chin. Was now the time to tell Marinette that he already knew who she was? That she had been the only one to ever be in his heart? Why does that matter, he asked, a voice coming out quieter than he'd expected. They were stood too close together. If he leaned down and angled her head again, he'd be close enough to kiss her. It doesn't, Marinette said, then took the DVD from him and went over to her computer. Cat Noir turned and watched her as she left, and even though she was physically less than a metre away, knowing she was sad made it seem like she was a mile away from him. They had come a long way in getting more comfortable around each other, but her secret identity was stopping them from getting closer. Tomorrow couldn't come soon enough. Adrian just hoped she reacted well when he told her he'd known who she was for months. He finally detransformed, and after he'd fed Plague a piece of cheese, Adrian turned and went to sit on the chaise. Did Mark or Nathaniel say anything more to you? he asked. Marinette shook her head as she looked at the setup screen for the DVD. No, but they usually get the Metro home together. Nathaniel left school right away though, and I did see Mark hang around for a bit with Aurora and Zoe. He was probably waiting for Nathaniel, but he'd already left. And I think when Mark realised that Nathaniel hadn't waited for him, he looked like he got pretty upset. He left before I could say anything to him though. That's awful. Yeah. You know, unless you're getting a good grade in English class, you're going to have to call your cousin because I have no idea what any of this says. 
Adrian smiled and went over to where Marinette was sitting at her computer. The setup screen didn't look too difficult, but his English wasn't good enough to find the subtitles option. You know, there is a fantastic invention, known to people in the business as... Google Translate. Marinette glanced at him. Didn't Miss Bustier say that was cheating? Yeah, for homework. We're trying to watch a Christmas movie. I'm not planning on writing an essay about it afterwards. She hummed. I think you should. Adrian rolled his eyes. Come on, let me sit down. I'll work it out. Marinette stood up, and once Adrian was seated, he took his phone out and typed each option on the setup page into Google Translate. Has Nathaniel always been like this? Adrian asked as he typed. Mean and stubborn? Honestly, I'm not sure. Being with Mark has really made him come out of his shell. Before that, he was really quiet, so it's hard to say. He's always been stubborn, I suppose, but not mean. Perhaps something happened today to make him act like this. Maybe, Adrian said, finally finding the subtitles options and clicking for French. The screen flashed to white as it changed, and in the bright colour, Adrian could see Marinette's reflection. I thought he really liked Mark. They hang around together a lot. Me too. I just hope one of them doesn't get akumatized. Just because the script change didn't get Ali akumatized doesn't mean Mark won't. Different things hurt us all. That's true. Adrian smiled and made eye contact with Marinette in the reflection of the screen. Personally, I didn't mind the script change all that much. Marinette huffed. Well, if we'd carried on, you'd have to have kissed me. And like I said, I wouldn't have minded. Marinette just stared at him for a few seconds, but didn't break eye contact. Why? She finally managed to ask. Why do you think? Marinette kept staring and eventually shrugged. Adrian knew he was going to have to tell her how he felt. He couldn't hint at it. If he did, she would never catch on. But he couldn't lie and pretend it didn't make him nervous. Probably less nervous than Marinette would ever feel to tell him how she felt, but still nervous nonetheless. His lady meant so much to him, and while he didn't see why she would reject him, it still made him apprehensive. He turned around in the chair so they were face to face, and now he could see the pretty pink blush on Marinette's face in the dim light. Marinette's eye. Akuma alert! Akuma alert! Both of their phones lit up and vibrated with the alert, breaking the moment, and Adrian grabbed his, he and Marinette watching the news broadcast together. Don't be bemused, it's just the news. Nadia Shamak here. A new supervillain has been spotted in Paris. His name is Glass, and he's freezing whatever his beam touches. The camera cut away from Nadia in the studio to show a lone figure walking down the street, hair and skin ice white, with icicles dripping from every extremity. In one hand was a pen, the same ice white colour, and as soon as Glass saw the camera watching him, he raised the pen, and from it, a bright white beam shot, and the feed went dead. Parisians, I urge you to stay indoors until Ladybug and Cat Noir arrive to save the day. Rewind it, Marinette said, and Adrian did, going to a good capture of glass. It's Mark, he said. He hadn't noticed the first time, but now he could see it. He didn't have an elaborate outfit like some of the other villains. His tie-dye shirt and red hoodie had simply been frosted over. Marinette had been right. Just because the script change hadn't gotten Ali or Akuma ties didn't mean the same would apply to Mark. But it was good they knew who the Akuma victim was. And this also meant they had a good idea of who Glass would be targeting. I guess you have to go, Marinette said as Adrian put his phone away. I do, he said, then stood up. I'll be back though. I'm sure it won't take long. Marinette bit her lip. Are you sure? It looks kind of... dangerous. Oh, I think I've faced worse, Adrian said, only just stopping himself from saying, I think we've faced worse. Plague, close out! Once transformed, Cat Noir turned to face Marinette. I'll be fine. Don't look so worried. I'll be back before you know it. Still, his princess bit her lip. Just please be careful. I will. No, seriously, you always sacrifice yourself in the fights. Well, sometimes I need to. And Ladybug knows what she's doing. I know she can always save me. He smiled as he watched Marinette blush at that. You trust her a lot, don't you? With my life. Her blush got deeper, and Cat Noir leaned in and kissed her on the cheek, making it get even worse. Stay here, he said, knowing full well she wouldn't. I don't know what will happen, but close the hatch and make sure the windows are shut too. He climbed up onto her bed and looked down at where she stood. It's going to be okay. I'll sort this out. Then we'll watch the film. See you in a minute, princess. Marinette's entire face went bright red, and she started to splutter, but Cat Noir just winked at her and leapt up onto the balcony. She slumped against her desk, one hand against her chest, feeling how fast her heart was beating. How was she supposed to tell him tomorrow that she was Ladybug when he had that kind of effect on her? She heard the chimes of the Kwamis phasing out of the sewing box, and when she turned to face them, they were all smiling. You're so cute together, Daisy exclaimed, and Marinette smiled at him. Thank you. You need to be going, though, Sass said, and Tiki floated forward. 
You can flirt with Adrian after, the Red Kwame said with a giggle, but it just made Marinette blush again. Yeah, yeah. Tiki, spots on! Once transformed, Ladybug left the room the same way Cat Noir had. She had no idea where exactly he had gone, though, so she started swinging between rooftops in the general direction of where Glass had been during the television broadcast. Her breath fogged up in front of her face as she flew around the city. It was still cold outside even though it had stopped snowing now, and the powder had encapsulated the city of love in a white blanket. Thankfully, though, the Parisians had heeded Nadia's warning. No one seemed to be outside. She just hoped it would stay that way. Ladybug landed on top of the Arc de Triomphe, able to see the general area where Glass had been on the news. And even though the sky was dark now, the city was well lit, and from here, she could see a black figure on the rooftops too. Ignoring how her heartbeat sped up at the sight of Cat Noir, she swung down to where he knelt, and he smiled in a hello. You got eyes on him, she asked? Yep, Cat Noir said, pointing with his baton. Glass wasn't that near to them, and was wandering down the street away from where they were knelt on a roof. As he walked, he pointed his pen at different things and froze them, mainly trees, and Ladybug glanced back towards the Arc de Triomphe. Now, she could see that the entire path was marked with frozen trees, benches, and lampposts. He's been busy? Oh, I'm sure it's not that bad. With his baton, Cat Noir aimed it down at the nearest frozen tree, but as soon as his stick touched it, the tree shattered, now just a pile of ice on the pavement. He and Ladybug looked at each other, alarmed. Maybe it's just because it was a tree, he suggested, a nervous smile on his face. I doubt they do well entirely frozen. He aimed his baton at a lamppost now, but as soon as the frozen object was touched, it shattered too. Okay, don't get hit by his ice then, Ladybug said. She had been right in her warning to Cat Noir back in her bedroom. The powers Mark had been given looked dangerous on the news, but now they knew the full extent of them, it made her more anxious. Are you okay, my lady? Cat Noir asked, sensing her distress. You seem a little frosty, he tagged onto the end to try to lighten the mood. She nodded, allowing herself a quick glance into his vivid green eyes for a moment of comfort. On dark nights like these, she sometimes thought they were brighter than the lights on the Eiffel Tower. I just don't want either of us to get hurt. Oh, we won't. We'll be fine. We're the greatest superhero team to ever exist. And with you in charge, nothing can ever go wrong, Bugaboo. Ladybug blushed. I thought I told you not to call me that. You did, but your conviction is waning, I can tell. Soon you'll be letting me call you by your real name, he said with a waggle of his eyebrows. Her stomach lurched, knowing that by tomorrow, he would know her real name. But now wasn't the time to think about that, or for Cat Noir to start making jokes either. They had to get this under control before Mark hurt anyone, particularly Nathaniel. Okay, I think I recognise this victim, Ladybug said, being careful not to give away just how close to Mark she was. And I think I know where he's heading. However, I think I could try and break him out of Yukuma. No way, my lady, Cat Noir said without hesitation. He could understand Marinette's reasoning here since they were both aware that the Yukuma ties villain was Mark. And in any other situation, he'd let her do it. But now they were here, the power Glass had was much more dangerous than he'd expected. He was not letting her risk herself like that. Why not? she asked with a confused pout. I've been watching him for a while. That beam reaches far. And it's fast. If he goes for you, you won't have a chance. I know, which is why I want to try this approach. Fighting him seems like it's off the table. And what if he freezes you? What am I supposed to do then? Cat Noir asked, trying to keep the worry out of his voice. But he knew he wasn't succeeding. I can't defeat him without you. I can't do any of this without you. Ladybug sighed, then reached up and gently cupped his jaw. He could feel his heart thrum beneath a layer of hard leather. The last time Marinette had touched him like this had been when she'd kissed him in the elevator. Of course, I don't want to get frozen, but if I do, then I know you could save me, Kitty. I trust you to bring me back just as much as you trust me to do it. You mean that? She nodded. I trust you with my life. Knowing that she was repeating the words Cat Noir hadn't long ago said to Marinette about Ladybug brought a smile to his face. Okay, but you keep your distance from him. I'd rather your pretty face not get frozen. Ladybug blushed. I'm, I'm not my lady, he said, cutting her off. You're the most gorgeous girl in this city. Her blush got worse, but she smiled. Thank you. Come on, I know a good spot where we can do this from. Cat Noir led Ladybug across the rooftops, closer to where Glass was, and when they were about 50 metres from him, they dropped down into an alleyway. This is a safe distance, he said. Usually he would be up for taking more risks, but it wasn't him taking the risk today. It would be Marinette's, and there was no way he was going to put the girl he loved in any more danger than was necessary. I'll stay in here and watch, but the moment you leave my line of vision, I'm coming to get you. Ladybug nodded, not wanting to argue. Cat Noir seemed really on edge. Maybe he was just desperate to get back to Marinette, which just made her smile. Okay, Kitty, I'll be careful. She wandered out into the street, her footsteps muffled by the snow. 
and in the distance she could see Mark. He was just within a range that he would be able to hear her. Mark, she called, and her friend whirled around to face her. Except right now, he didn't really look like her friend. The ice seemed to be spreading over his body, making him appear an almost frosted blue colour, and his eyes were wild with anger. She wasn't so sure now she could break him out of this. Go away, Mark shouted, but he didn't move towards Ladybug. I can't do that, I'm sorry. Can we talk about how you got like this, though? Maybe I can help? Glass sneered. Like you can, you wouldn't understand. Perhaps I can try, Ladybug asked, taking a small step forward. She didn't want to risk glancing over at Cat Noir, but she was sure he could still see her. You wouldn't get it, he shouted, getting even angrier. Because you're just like him, rejecting the person who loves you over and over again, but leading them on every day. I don't, Ladybug started, but Glass cut it off. Don't bother, you're no better than him, and he'll pay. Mark ran off then, and Ladybug just stood there, staring at the snow at her feet. She didn't lead Cat Noir on. Ever. The first time Andre had been akumatized, they had no choice but to act like a couple, and Cat Noir was well aware of what they were doing, and she'd had no choice but to reject him all those times. She had been in love with Adrian, not him, but now things were different. Now she knew they were the same person, and she had finally allowed herself to fall in love with his cheeky Cat Noir side too. She glanced over at where he was standing in the alleyway, and he gave her a soft smile, but then his green eyes widened in horror. Marinette! he screamed, running towards her, and she froze in shock. Marinette? He had just called her Marinette. How? Before she had time to process it any further, she saw the bright white beam heading for her, and then Cat Noir collided with her, knocking her to the ground, just as the beam hit him instead. Kitty, she whispered, already feeling the tears gather in her eyes, but she forced herself to stand up and she scrambled to the alleyway where Cat Noir had previously been. Once safe, she stared out at her frozen partner, he knew. He knew who she was. She held a hand up to where her heart was pounding in her chest. How long had he known? Why hadn't he said anything? And why had he continued to flirt with Ladybug when he knew she was the pathetic Marinette Dupencheng? Ladybug shook her head as if to get rid of the thoughts. Cat Noir didn't think of her like that, and neither did Adrian. They both thought that she was wonderful. Even though he knew who she was beneath the mask, he still thought she was amazing. A sob escaped her mouth. Despite knowing who she was, Cat Noir was still in love with her, wasn't he? Which meant Adrian was in love with her too. She so badly wanted to run back out into the streets and grab Adrian's hand and tell him she'd save him, but she couldn't. He'd shattered the moment she touched him, but she could save him. She always did. She had to do this. For him. The superheroine leant her back on the brick wall behind her, trying to stop herself from crying. That wouldn't help her right now. Her priority had to be saving Mark. If she didn't, she'd never be able to get Adrian back. Remembering what Glass had said to her though, he hadn't even mentioned the comic. He talked about relationships and being led on. She and Adrian had assumed that Mark and Nathaniel were dating, but from what Mark had said before, it seemed like they weren't, but were close enough to be a couple, and also flirted like they were one. It sounded like Nathaniel was leading him on. Marinette didn't know how long that had been going on, but it would seem that the changing of the comic was the last straw for Mark and had led him to being akumatized. She didn't know all the details, and she doubted speculating would help. One thing was for sure, Glass would be heading for Nathaniel's place. Ladybug peeked out the alleyway, glancing both ways. She scampered across the snow so she stood in front of Cat Noir. The eyes had frozen his facial expression into one of alarm, and she so badly wanted to reach up and cup his jaw, promising that she'd save him and kiss him on the cheek. But the moment she did, Adrian would shatter into thousands of pieces, and Marinette knew her own heart would break into just as many parts if she had to see that. I'll come back for you, she said, and with one last glance at him, Ladybug took her yo-yo out and launched herself up onto the nearest building. She started running in the direction of Nathaniel's. She had only been there a handful of times, usually only when the two of them had an art project to work on for school. Nathaniel wasn't known to be the most sociable outside of his friendship with Mark, which is why it confused Marinette more if he had been pushing Mark away. Around him, Nathaniel just seemed to light up. There was definitely more going on. In the distance, she could see the apartment where Nathaniel lived. It was the same style as where Alia and her family lived, and not that far from her best friend's place either, and judging from the street below, Glass had yet to make it here. Snow was still everywhere, but there were no extra objects that had been frozen within an inch of their life that marked Glass's path. He was travelling on foot, and Ladybug had the advantage of the rooftops, but Mark could have taken the metro here. There was no telling when he would show up she had to get Nathaniel to safety as soon as possible. If her memory served her correctly, Nathaniel's room was in the same position as Alia's, and she smiled when she landed softly on the correct balcony. 
Her classmate had yet to draw the curtains, but the lights were on, illuminating when Nathaniel was sitting at his desk. He was leant over, sketching on his tablets, completely absorbed in his work. Stuck to the wall above the desk were panels of the comic, as well as photos of their school friends, including several of Mark. It was obvious he meant a lot to Nathaniel, so what had happened between them? The rest of the room was as she remembered it, the bed behind the desk, a wardrobe in the corner, and music posters and art prints covering the rest of the walls. There wasn't a lot of furniture to hide behind if glass cornered them in here. It was for the best to get Nathaniel out and take the fight elsewhere. Ladybug rapped on the window, and shocked by the sudden noise three floors up, Nathaniel jumped out of his seat and dropped his stylus. He quickly glanced at the window, suddenly relieved when he saw it was only Ladybug. He walked over to the balcony door and slid it open. Ladybug? Is everything okay? No, not really. You're in danger. Nathaniel narrowed his eyes. From who? From me. The red-haired boy's eyes went wide and he spun around to see an akumatized mark standing in the doorway of his bedroom. Ladybug's hand darted forwards and grabbed Nathaniel's wrist, but Glass saw the motion. Move him and I'll go back and shatter your precious partner, Glass said, voice full of malice, and she let go of Nathaniel. Marinette's heart feeling hollow just at the mention of the current state of Adrian. No, Cat Noir. She couldn't think of him as Adrian right now. It would only hurt her more. Mark, Nathaniel said, shaking his head in disbelief. What happened? Glass just laughed. What do you think? You happened. And that stupid comic. He pointed his pen at the tablet on the desk and froze it. But it's just a comic, Nathaniel shouted back. Stop arguing, Ladybug said. It felt like they were continuing their conversation from lunchtime. And once again, the two boys ignored her. Is this it? Akumatized over a comic? No, Glass shouted, a bean sparking out of the pen, and Ladybug watched as it hit the carpet. Cat Noir was right. It was fast. It's because of you. Today was the last straw. You've been leading me on for months, flirting with me all the time, and you even kissed me last week. Mark's green eyes welled up with tears, but then you rejected me, over and over. You wouldn't even talk to me about it, and now you're pushing me out of the comic too. Ladybug just stared at Mark. She had no idea any of that had happened. She had been so focused on her own feelings that she hadn't even noticed something like that was going on between them. It was no wonder why Mark had been akumatized. She could see after being led on by Nathaniel, followed by them kissing but being rejected, how the comic was the final straw. Nathaniel averted his gaze from Mark. You don't understand. I think I do. Glass pointed his pen at Nathaniel. No, wait! Ladybug shouted. There was still more to the situation. If she could get Nathaniel to talk, there was a chance of her to be able to convince Mark to break out of his Akuma. But Glass didn't listen, and a beam shot out and froze Nathaniel. Ladybug shrieked and ducked behind her frozen classmates. She only had one choice left. Lucky charm! Into her hands fell a full bottle of water, and she just stared down at it. How on earth could this help her? From her position behind a frozen Nathaniel, she glanced around the room, but there seemed to be little available to help her. Glass fired another beam and shot Nathaniel, and as he broke into pieces, Ladybug rolled so she was now taking cover behind the bed. Glass was either going to freeze the bed and then shatter it to get to her, or he would just march around it towards her. Nothing was stopping him. Whatever she was going to do, she had to do it now. But do what? She stared down at the bottle in her hands, then quickly uncapped it. Ladybug only had one chance, and she had to win. For Adrian. Taking a deep breath, Ladybug stood up and spun around, just as the beam started to exit Glass's pen. Without giving it a second thought, she threw the bottle, the water falling out as it did, and the beam hit it. The water froze, but it didn't stop the trajectory Ladybug had sent it in. The lump of frozen water was heading for Glass's face, the empty bottle already having fallen to the ground, and Mark raised his arms to protect himself. The ice hit his forearms, shattering, and the force of it made Glass drop his pen. Before he realised what he'd done though, Ladybug sprinted forwards and stamped on it, snapping the pen in half, and releasing the Akuma within. She let out a shaky breath that she didn't realise she had been holding. She had done it. She had saved Adrian. He would be okay. Taking out her yo-yo, Ladybug captured the Akuma. Then she grabbed the water bottle and threw it into the air. Miraculous Ladybug, she shouted, and she watched as the Ladybugs restored Nathaniel, and then as he flew out of the window to do the same thing to Candlemon. At the thought of Adrian, Marinette's first instinct was to jump out of the window and check he was okay, and then interrogate him as to how he knew her real name. But she knew she couldn't. Right now, she was Ladybug, not Marinette, and she had a duty to find out what exactly had been going on between Nathaniel and Mark. Mark, Nathaniel shouted, running across the room to him as soon as he was back to life. But the younger boy, who was sitting on the floor now, curled in on himself. Please, don't come near me. 
I can't carry on like this. It was clear Ladybug couldn't leave right now and run to Cat Noir, but she knew he would remember what he said before he got frozen. He would know she would want to talk. She got out her yo-yo and slid the shell up. To Cat Noir. Be there soon. Just need to help Mark and Nathaniel. It was a simple message, and it gave nothing away about how she was feeling. Which, now the Akuma attack was over, she was feeling nervous about what she'd say to him. And what would she say to him? She had been shocked enough to find out he was Adrian, and she'd hardly dared to say a thing in the moment. But now the Akuma attack was over, the shock seemed to engulf her once more. There were so many thoughts running through her head about how her next conversation with Cat Noir would go, but there was one prevailing thought that won over. Did Adrian love her? Ladybug Nathaniel said, and she looked up to see his worried face. Sorry, lost in my own thoughts. It's okay, I just... I don't know what to do, he said, looking nervous for the first time in a while. Nathaniel had always been on the quieter side, but when he spoke, he was always certain. About Mark, Ladybug asked, glancing at her friend who was still on the floor, curled up by the bedroom door. He didn't look upset enough to be acclimatised again, but this situation still needed resolving. Honestly, I am a little confused by it all. I thought the two of you were dating, but Mark said you led him on and kissed him. Nathaniel bowed his head in shame. I... I'm falling in love with him. He's the only person I can truly be myself with, and he makes me happy. Ladybug smiled. It was the same for her with Adrian. I'm glad. But I don't see the problem. Why did you push him away? Nathaniel looked over at Mark. I haven't told my dad that I'm bisexual yet. And it's so close to Christmas. What if he throws me out? There it was, the missing clue. She knew there had to be a good explanation for all of this. She placed a hand on Nathaniel's shoulder. I can't make you do anything you're not ready to. But I think if you explain this to Mark, he'll understand why you acted the way you did. Nathaniel glanced up at Ladybug. Will you stay with me while I tell him? She smiled. Mark? Of course. No, well, Mark too, but my dad. I'm ready to tell him, but I don't want to be alone. Ladybug's smile widened. I'll stay as long as you need me to. The red-headed boy finally returned her smile and he went over to Mark, crouching down but keeping his distance, explaining in a hushed voice why he'd done what he did. Thankfully, Mark shuffled over to Nathaniel and took his hand in his. If anything bad happens, you can stay at my place. Nathaniel smiled, but it didn't reach his eyes. Thanks. The front door to the apartment opened then, and through the open bedroom door, Ladybug watched as Mr. Kurtzberg came into the complex, still wearing his City of Paris bus driver's uniform. He smiled at his son, but his eyes widened when he saw Mark and Ladybug. Did something happen? Ladybug smiled. I had it all handled, Mr. Kurtzberg. Everything's back to normal now. But your son needs to talk to you. Nathaniel glanced back at Ladybug, and after receiving an encouraging smile from her, he stood up, letting Mark's hand slip out of his. Dad, I'm... I'm bisexual, he said. Mr. Kurtzberg stared at Nathaniel for a moment, his face inscrutable, before he gave his son a small smile and simply opened his arms. Nathaniel let out a shaky sigh of relief and hugged his dad, and after a moment of embrace, Mr. Kurtzberg glanced at Mark. Are you two... Both boys looked away, blushing. How about this, Mr. Kurtzberg said. We'll walk Mark home, then come back here. We've got some ice cream in the freezer. We can have a proper talk, yeah? Nathaniel nodded with a smile. It seemed, for now, things were going to be okay. Ladybug's earrings started to beep. She probably only had about three minutes left before she detransformed. And as happy as she was for her friends, she really needed to talk to Candlewall. I take it you don't need me anymore, Ladybug said, backing away towards the still open balcony doors. Mark and Nathaniel both shook their heads, the two boys still blushing. Thank you, Ladybug, the red-headed boy said, and with one last smile, Ladybug finally left the room. She closed the balcony doors behind her, stepping out once more into the ice-cold temperatures, but she didn't care about how freezing it was. She needed to see her kitty. Ladybug Jojo beeped them with the sound of a message, and she slid the shell up to read it. From Cat Noir, on the Trocadero, their usual meeting place. It was out of the way of the public. It was a good idea. They couldn't have a conversation about their secret identities in the middle of the streets. She slid the shell back down, then Ladybug lassoed her yo-yo onto the nearest chimney, and then she was away, advancing through the city towards the Eiffel Tower. Her normally confident hands shook around the string of the yo-yo, though, as she travelled. She had only just won against glass. If what she'd done with the water bottle hadn't worked, she would have got frozen too, and Shadow Moth would have won. She made it to the Eiffel Tower, and opposite her, across the bridge and on top of the Trocadero, Ladybug could see Cat Noir, lit by the lights of the city. 
He wasn't sat down like he usually did when they met up there, though. He was stood up, restlessly shifting weight from one foot to another. The sight of him alone sent her heart into overdrive, but it wasn't just because of how she felt about him. After what he'd done, she'd almost never seen him again. God, she'd nearly lost him. He'd nearly died. With tears in her eyes, she advanced across the bridge and landed on top of the Trocadero. Cat Noir heard her land and he turned around with a smile, but she strode towards him, on the verge of bursting into tears. Adrian Agress, you are going to end up dead one day, she shouted, the steel caps of his boots touching her toes because of how close they were standing. I've told you over and over again to stop sacrificing yourself. What happens one day if you don't make it back? Cat Noir continued to smile. It'll never come to that. I always know you can do it, my lady. That's no reason to kill yourself. And why are you smiling? She shouted, only now registering the look on his face. Because you call me Adrian. There's only one person who knows my identity. At the reminder of their supposedly secret identities and what Cat Noir has shouted right before his sacrifice, Ladybug blushed, her anger now dissipating into shyness. And you call me Marinette, she said, tearing her eyes away from his. Am I wrong? No, she said, starting to back away from Cat Noir. But you must be disappointed to know that she's Ladybug. Before she could get too far away, Cat Noir wrapped an arm around Ladybug's waist and pulled her back to him, their toes touching. Not in the slightest. I wouldn't have wanted it to be anyone else. He closed a small distance between them and gently placed a kiss on her forehead, making Ladybug's blush even worse. You really don't mind, she asked, the quiet volume of her voice giving away how nervous she truly felt. Adrian knew Marinette well enough to recognise the change in her voice. He needed to lighten the mood before she shut down on him completely. Of course not. Although, I was planning on waiting until tomorrow to tell you that I already knew. I got you for Secret Santa, he said with a wink. I got you too. I was going to do the same. And now you've ruined the surprise! They both started laughing, foreheads pressed together. But the two of them went quiet as Ladybug's earrings gave out their final beeps. Should I? she started, but Cat Noir held her tight to him, his arms still around her waist. Stay, he whispered. And she did. Cat Noir smiling as he stared into Ladybug's eyes, his smile only getting brighter as the pink light washed over her, revealing Marinette. There's my princess, he said, reaching up with his other hand to gently trace with his claws where her mask had been. Marinette's heartbeat spread up again. Not that it hadn't been beating fast this whole time, but now it felt like it was beating so loud that even Cat Noir would be able to hear it. Tell me what you're thinking, Cat Noir said. He knew that Marinette's mind would be going into overdrive about all of this. Cat Noir is in love with Ladybug, she said, breaking their eye contact. She knew she couldn't look at him when she was saying this. He is. So, is Adrian aggressed? Cat Noir smirked. He knew where this was going. It felt like he'd been waiting for this moment since he first ever set eyes on Ladybug. Is Adrian what? he asked. Marinette risked a glance up at him through her eyelashes. Don't make me say it. His smirk morphed into a smile. Is Adrian aggressed in love with Marinette Dupencheng? Is that what you're trying to ask? She nodded and Cat Noir gently cupped her cheek, tilting her face up so their eyes could meet. I am. At his admission, he could feel the thundering of Marinette's pulse on her neck beneath the pad of his smallest finger, and his smile widened. His own heart was beating just as fast. He dreamed of this moment for months. He leaned in and placed a kiss on the tip of her nose, and a gasp escaped Marinette. He wanted to kiss her properly, but he knew this wasn't the right time. He knew she would need to process everything that had happened tonight first, and after having waited so long for this moment, there was no way he was going to mess it all up at the final hurdle. Let's get you home, Cat Noir said, taking out his baton. You'll freeze out here. Marinette just nodded, completely silent as Cat Noir took her up in his arms, hiding her blushing face in the crook of his neck. This was really happening. It wasn't a dream. Adrian Agrest actually had feelings for her. But what happened next? She'd imagined this in so many different ways, both before and after she found out Adrian was Cat Noir, but she hadn't ever thought about the specifics further than the confession. They landed on her balcony all too soon, and Cat Noir carefully placed Marinette down, and she gave him a nervous glance. What? What happens now? He smiled and took one of her hands in his. Whatever we want. Well, she bit her lip. How did you find out I was Ladybug? I'll tell you tomorrow. I think you just need to process this a little more first. I know how my lady's brain works. Marinette smiled. It felt a little strange to know that Adrian was the one who knew her the best, but not strange in a bad way. Not at all. Yeah, just, I don't know. Write down all your questions and you can ask me tomorrow. And I can't wait to see you in the dress you've made for tomorrow's Christmas party. 
Marinette laughed and swung their joined hands slightly. How do you know I made one? You and Alia aren't exactly subtle in class, Bugaboo. Fair point. Go on, get some rest. We'll talk in the morning, Cat Noir said with a smile. Although he really didn't want to leave. Not now he finally had her. The two teenagers hugged, then reluctantly pulled away, but stayed in the circle of each other's arms. Thank you for saving me, Kitty, Marinette whispered, a shy smile on her face. Always, my lady. And thank you for saving me too. He removed one hand from around her waist, gently cupped her jaw, and then leaned in and kissed her cheek, right at the corner of her lips. It made both of them blush, and Cat Noir stepped away. I'll see you in the morning. Sweet dreams, princess. With a wink, he took out his baton and left, and Marinette stood in silence for five seconds, looking at where he had just been, and then started squealing. This was really real! This was really happening! There was a groan from behind her, and she turned around to see all of the Kwamis, including a grumpy-looking bark. I was trying to sleep, the dog Kwami said, but Tiki made her appearance known then. Oh, letter bark! Cat Noir finally told her he knew! The rest of the Kwamis cheered, apart from Kalki, who let out a sigh of relief. Thank goodness, I was so worried. Marinette narrowed her eyes at the horse Kwami. You already knew? Kalki immediately phased back into the bedroom, obviously not wanting to talk about it. I'm sure Adrian will tell you about it all tomorrow, Tiki said with a happy chirp, and Marinette almost started squealing again. She knew Cat Noir had told her to get some rest, but she doubted she could fall asleep ever again. Not now Marinette knew Adrian loved her. As expected, Marinette didn't get much sleep, and while it usually would have made her groggy, she didn't feel tired in the slightest. Instead, she got up early for once and filled her time with helping her parents in the bakery, and as she laid out the croissants and pan au chocolat in the pastry case, all of her thoughts were filled with Adrian. She had no idea what was going to happen between them next, but right now, she just couldn't wait to see him. When it was time to go to school, Marinette bounced upstairs to get her back, and there was a noticeable spring in her step as she crossed the road. She couldn't remember the last time she'd been this excited. She bounded up the steps to school, and she immediately saw Adrian, emerging from the boiler room, and as he shut the door, their eyes met, and the two teenagers blushed. Instead of shying away like she usually would though, Marinette started walking over to him, and Adrian went to her, and they met in the middle, halfway between the school's entrance and the boiler room. Hi, she stuttered out, but there was a bright smile on her face. She was nervous, but after everything she had been through with Adrian, she knew she could do this. Hello, my lady. Her blush got worse. I I'm not sure you should call me that. Oh, do you not like it anymore? I do! It's just... We're Adrian and Marinette here. I don't want anyone to get suspicious. Adrian nodded, stepping closer to Marinette to take her hand in his. I guess I'll have to call you princess at school instead. Would you like that? She nodded in assent even though she knew Chloe and Lila probably wouldn't have the greatest reaction to that. Or to her and Adrian dating. But she didn't care. Not now she was finally with him. What were you doing in the boiler room, Marinette asked, peeking over his shoulder as if she could tell something from the door. But there was no indication that anything had changed from that alone. Ah, Adrian said, starting to walk towards the stairs, and gently pulled Marinette along with him. Your secret Santa gift. So don't go in there, okay? It's for after lunch. Her eyes widened. What on earth have you done? She asked. It's meant to be a small gift, you know. I know, I googled it. But this is my first time playing, so that makes it special. And the person I got is very special too. He stopped walking to kiss Marinette on the cheek, but before she could fully process what Adrian had done, she heard a camera go off behind them. Both she and Adrian turned to see Alia and Nino standing behind them, their two friends staring at them slack jawed But Alia still had enough presence of mind to take her phone out and capture the cheek kiss. Adrian smiled, a light blush dusting across his cheeks. Hi guys, he said. And when did this happen? Alia exclaimed, and Adrian and Marinette exchanged a look. They hadn't got a story straight about that one. They couldn't tell everyone that they'd finally confessed their feelings for each other on top of the trocadero after saving Mark and Nathaniel. Uh, well, you see, Marinette started, but Adrian swiftly took over for her. My father invited her to the house yesterday evening. He was really impressed with the pigeon hat and wanted to see more of her designs. And then Marinette stayed for dinner, and then we played some video games, and then... He trailed off and simply held their joined hands up, and Nino pumped his fist in the air. Congrats, my dude! I thought you'd never say anything to her. Adrian narrowed his eyes. I never told you I liked Marinette. I didn't tell anyone. Dude, you didn't have to. The way you look at her was starting to make me feel sick, but that will probably get worse now you're together. 
Alarmed, Nino turned to his girlfriend. I have to swap seats with Marinette. Are you kidding, Elia asked. We won't get any work done if we're sat next to each other, and those two will do even less. The couple started to bicker, and Adrian smiled fondly and continued to lead Marinette upstairs. He didn't want to get involved. Do you think we'll ever argue like that? Adrian asked, Marinette walking beside him, the two of them still holding hands. I'm pretty sure we already have done, she said, one eyebrow raised, and he realised she was referring to Ladybug and Cat Noir rather than Adrian and Marinette. Well, it shows we were just meant to be a couple all along. I did try to tell you. She rolled her eyes. Yes, I'm aware, you pushy cat. Adrian just laughed and led his girlfriend into their classroom, and as soon as they walked through the threshold, Chloe, who was sitting at her desk, stood up, her jaw slack. Good morning, Chloe, Adrian said, saying it as if he hadn't noticed Chloe's reaction in the slightest, and he simply took a blushing marinette up the stairs in the centre of the room and sat her down at her desk. That went well, he whispered, staying at his girlfriend's desk. Marinette smiled. It did, but we still have Lila to contend with, Adrian grimaced. We'll deal with her later. Just concentrate on me, princess. He winked at her and then went to sit down, leaving Marinette a blushing mask in his wake. Alia and Nino came into the classroom then, still bickering about the seating arrangements, but they had thankfully stopped by the time Lila had shown up. Marinette trusted it would be okay, that Adrian would stop Lila before she said or did anything. After all, Adrian was the only one who wholeheartedly believed her about her lies. But even so, who knew what that girl would do to try to sabotage their relationship? But on the other hand, she had no idea just how close Adrian and Marinette were. The teenage superhero was certain that the bond she had with him was absolutely solid. But right now, Lila knew nothing, and their morning of classes passed like a dream. When Miss Bustier wasn't looking, Adrian would pass little notes back to Marinette, telling her about the dream he'd had last night. About her, of course. And she wrote back to tell him she was surprised he could even sleep. She could even see for the first time the pink and green sparks that occasionally emitted from Adrian's school bag. She had no idea how long the Kwamis had been playing together during school time. The bell for lunch finally went, and Adrian turned around with a smile as he got to see Marinette again. Ali was definitely right. The two of them would get zero work done if they sat together. Adrian couldn't deny that he wouldn't love to have Marinette beside him, but it was sadly for the best. Marinette returned his smile. Are you going to go home to get ready? Adrian nodded. Yes, but I'm not having lunch, and you don't either. Food is part of the surprise. She narrowed her eyes. This is suspicious. He smirked. It's meant to be. See you in a bit. Adrian stood up, and he started to lean forwards, going to kiss Marinette on the cheek, but he thought better of it. He knew they had been together for less than a day, but after dreaming about being with her for so long, it just felt natural to him to do it. But Lila was still in the classroom, as was Chloe, and it was a miracle the blonde girl hadn't said anything about their relationship. Although, to be fair to her, she was probably still too much in shock to do that yet. Thankfully, Marinette smiled, not hurt by his pulling back. It's okay. I get it. We'll tell everyone this afternoon, he suggested, and she blushed. Only if you want to. He leant towards her a little bit and his voice dropped to a whisper. Of course I want to, princess. But what if your father forget him, Adrian said. Would his father approve? Maybe not. Would Adrian care? No. Marinette had been there for him continuously every single day for the past year, and over 14 years, his dad had hardly ever shown up for him. No matter what his father said, there would be nothing he could do to end his relationship with Marinette. She smiled. Okay. I'll see you in a bit. He gave her a small wave, then grabbed his school bag and left the classroom. Adrian felt a little sad about not kissing her, but in a way, even though Ali and Nino and Chloe knew about their relationship, he kind of wanted to keep it a secret a little while longer. Not because he was ashamed of Marinette, just because he liked it just being the two of them. When he was with her, he always felt like they were in this little protected bubble together, and that feeling had gotten stronger now they were dating. Wait, had he actually asked Marinette to be his girlfriend? He hadn't, had he? That needed fixing this afternoon for sure. The car was waiting for him as he came down the school steps, and as soon as he walked into the manor, Natalie was stood waiting for him inside the foyer, holding her phone. Would you like me to ring for the pizza now? Yes, please, he said. I'll just go and get changed. She nodded and Adrian went to his room. The pizza was part of the surprise too, although Adrian had yet to tell Natalie who it was for, just that it was for school. As much as he didn't care what his father thought of him being with Marinette, he didn't want him to find out just yet. It was already a miracle that he was being allowed to go to this party when there would be a lot of junk food. He needed to take this one step at a time. Once in his room, he set about getting changed, and Plaid came out of his bag. 
It seems you two lovebirds are getting along well. Adrian smiled as he buttoned up his shirt. I think so. The Kwame hummed. You haven't kissed her yet. The next button slipped out of Adrian's fingers. I know, he said, feeling his cheeks heat up. I didn't think last night was the right moment. Marinette had a lot to think about. With a smirk, Plag settled on the bed as Adrian continued to get dressed. But you wanted to. I've always wanted to. Plag rolled his eyes. Oh really? I didn't know. It's not like you haven't mentioned it every single day for the past year. Adrian just smiled fondly at his Kwame as he pulled on his waistcoat. If I have to listen to you drone on about Camembert, then I'm sure you can handle me mentioning Mariner every now and then. He left his Kwame to his own devices, and Adrian went into the bathroom to quickly check how he looked. He'd asked Nino and Chloe about DuPont Christmas parties, and they'd told him it was a semi-formal event, so he'd gone for dark grey dress pants, a light grey waistcoat, and a white shirt with his normal sneakers. He kept his hair how he usually wore it, and after opening the first tube top buttons on his shirt to keep it more casual, he rolled his sleeves up too, so it looked less formal. After one last check over, he went back out into his room and found Plag already gorging on a selection of cheese at his desk. You ready to go? The Kwame inhaled a piece of rock for, then gave Adrian a grin with his two tiny teeth. I'll take that as a yes then. Plag phased into the pocket of Adrian's trousers as the teenage boy left his room. And as the model strolled downstairs, Natalie was coming back into the manor holding two boxes of pizza with a frown on her face. Is two really enough for the whole class? Oh, well, everyone's bringing food. There'll be loads to eat. Everyone will probably only need a slice, Adrian said, easily lying to Natalie as he took the pizza. Perhaps he should tell her about Marinette before his father to gauge her reaction. Thankfully, Natalie just nodded. I'll see you after school. Adrian left the house with a smile and got back in the car. But when he got out at school, he saw Marinette leaving the bakery, holding a small plastic container. She hadn't seen him yet, too busy concentrating on not getting run over while she crossed the road. But Adrian couldn't take his eyes off her. Her hair was down for once, brushing against her bare shoulders. The dress wasn't covering them. Instead, the garment was held up by a tight pink bodice, and the skirt and small off-the-shoulder sleeves were made out of a pretty pink tulle, and Marinette looked gorgeous in it. Once she'd made it successfully across the road without dying, Marinette finally registered Adrian, and she couldn't help but blush when she saw his intense gaze was focused on her. She made her way over to him and gave him a shy smile. Hi, she said, her voice quiet. It felt like this morning all over again. You look beautiful, Adrian told her, and her blush got worse. She'd never have dreamed that Adrian would ever tell her something like that. So thank you. He held out a hand towards her, the one that wasn't holding the pizza boxes. Let's get inside. It's too cold out here. Marinette glanced at his outstretched hand. Are you sure? She asked. We haven't told everyone yet. Adrian just smiled. Most people will have gone home to get changed. We're probably the first back. And I can't walk my girlfriend to her secret Santa present without holding her hand, now can I? If Marinette bushed anymore, she'd look like a tomato rather than a teenage girl. Adrian had just said she was his girlfriend. No, she stuttered as she took his hand. Am I okay to call you my girlfriend? He asked as he led her into school. I know I just presumed and didn't ask you properly, but you know how I feel about you, and I know how you feel about me. I checked with Markov, and the rest of the class aren't subtle about it, and neither are you really. And I am, um, well, um, Marinette peered up at Adrian and saw that he was now blushing too. He hardly ever lost his words due to anxiety like she did. Are you nervous, Adrian? He nodded as he stopped at the top of the steps, and he couldn't meet her eyes. I just, I've waited so long to be with you that I don't want to mess this up. She squeezed Adrian's hand. You could never. He finally looked at her properly and gave her a bright smile. I'm glad. Come on, before the pizza gets cold. Adrian led her through the courtyard towards the boiler room. There were a few people left milling around, but for now, the school was largely quiet. Is the pizza part of my present? Marina asked, phoning her voice now. While she didn't want Adrian to feel nervous, she did feel a little comforted to know that he wanted this to work as badly as she did. Adrian nodded. What else? she asked. You'll see, he said, arriving at the boiler room door and letting go of her hand to push it open. After you, my lady? She smiled and stepped inside, going down the steps and along the corridor to where the boilers were. When the rest of the room opened out at the end, she saw Adrian's surprise to the right, illuminated by the blue lights that the boiler room gave off. He'd taken the projector from the library and set it up with a laptop. The menu for a DVD projected onto one of the walls. The pipes distorted the image a little, but Marinette didn't care. On the floor by the laptop were several blankets and cushions. Some were spread out, intended to keep them warm on the cold concrete floor, 
and Marinette guessed the rest were for wrapping themselves up with during the film. And in front of the blankets were snacks for them to eat. He had gone to so much effort, and now Marinette felt her efforts paled in comparison. Do you like it? he asked as he came to stand beside her. I love it, it's wonderful. But I only got you this, Marinette said, holding the box up. And Adrian just took Marinette's hand again and led her over to the blankets. Don't say that. You've done loads for me. You've been there for me... I don't even know how many times now. And there for Paris, too. This is the least I could do to say thank you. They both sat down, side by side in the mass of blankets, and Adrian put a pizza box in front of each of them. Shall I start the film? Actually, Marinette said as she put her box of gingerbread to one side. I'd like to know how you found out my identity. I thought about it all last night and I can't work it out. I'm always so careful. Unlike you, who transformed in front of me in an elevator. Adrian gave her a cheeky grin. Well, in my defence, I did that on purpose. I wanted you to know who I was. And I had already found out who you were, and I knew you had feelings for me, but not for Cat Noir. So that's why I transformed. So you would know we were the same person. And also, you know, to save you. Marinette narrowed her eyes as she thought. So you knew when Audrey got akumatized again. She cast her mind back to the Akuma attacks before that, but came up blank. There was no point that Adrian would have found out. You won't guess it. It was Kalki's fault. When Zoe was akumatized, you sent Kalki to get Cat Noir, but Kalki didn't wait for the portal to close before she started speaking to me, and I saw your room through it. I was planning on telling you I knew your identity down here. I knew you'd freak out, so it needed to be done somewhere quiet, and I thought the film would help you relax and calm down. And watching films is kind of... our thing. But last night... Adrian's hands gripped the blankets. You already knew I was worried about you going out to talk to Glass. I know as Ladybug you're strong and confident, but I always worry. Especially now I know you're Marinette. You're so gentle and you wouldn't hurt anyone, and when I saw the ice heading for you... Marinette heard Adrian's voice thicken with tears, and she didn't hesitate in shuffling closer to him and taking one of his hands in hers. I'm here, she said, bringing his hand up so it cupped her cheek, and she pressed her hand against it, holding it there. I'm here because you saved me. I just can't bear to see you get hurt, princess, Adrian said. Tears gone from his voice now, but he still looked sad. She nodded. She knew that feeling all too well. Last week, Nino had been akumatized into Rocketeer, and seeing Count Noir's body moulded into the side of a van like that, she didn't want to think about that right now. They were here, and they were together. That's what mattered. We'll always protect each other, Marinette said, and Adrian brought his other hand up, so it rested on her waist. Always. I love you more than I think is possible. Marinette felt like her heart was going to beat out of her chest at that admission. I love you too, Adrian. He squeezed her waist slightly and his eyes darted down to her lips. Can I kiss you? Marinette nodded, although she couldn't pretend she wasn't nervous. She and Adrian had kissed twice before, but the first had been to save him, and he didn't even remember it, and neither of them remembered the second one. And while she had imagined kissing him again, more than she'd cared to admit after she found out his identity, she was still nervous. But this was Adrian. Marinette knew he would take care of her. Before she knew it, she felt Adrian pulling her in closer by the waist, and then his lips were against hers, kissing her properly. She didn't remember much from Valentine's Day to truly recall how it had felt. She had kissed him on impulse to save him, and then she had moved on. It had been her first kiss, but despite that, she hadn't felt her heartbeat speed up or fireworks exploding behind her eyelids or butterflies fluttering in her tummy. That's how Alia had described her first kiss with Nino to Marinette. But now she got to experience her first kiss again, she felt all of that and more. It was like her heart was going to explode from all the love she held for Adrian in it. He pulled back a little, and Marinette opened her eyes, not even having realised she had closed them in the first place. And Adrian was right there, his green eyes dilated in the semi-dark room, their noses brushing together. I wanted to kiss you the last time we were in here, he whispered. You look so pretty in this light. Then he leant back in and lightly pressed her lips together again. Last time? Marinette asked when Adrian pulled away again. She couldn't think straight when he kissed her. Guilt trip sent him monster. Marinette nodded, remembering now. You really have had feelings for me for a while, she said, fiddling slightly with the chul hem of her skirts. Did you doubt I did? At first I did, because Cat Noir was so infatuated with Ladybug. And when I found out he was you, I felt like there was no chance for me. But every single time you came over to watch a movie, or when we did homework together, I always hoped you felt something for me. Adrian smiled, and every single time I came over, I wanted to tell you that I already knew you were Ladybug and that I loved you. 
He kissed her lightly again, and Marinette couldn't help but smile. She doubted she'd ever get used to that. And speaking of, Adrian said, we should start the film before the pizza gets any colder. He pressed play, and then they got comfortable on the mound of cushions and blankets as the movie began. What film is it? She asked. You've got mail, Adrian said. Nasty likes it. It's about a man and woman in New York who hate each other because they own rival book companies. But what they don't know is that they're online pen pals who are in love with each other. I didn't watch it with her, but it reminded me of us. Hmm, yeah, I see the connection with the book companies and Ladybug and Cat Noir. I mean, in total, we've sold approximately... zero books. Adrian glared slightly at Marinette. I will hit you with a pillow, no matter how much I love you. She just giggled and they both started to eat as the film played. Kissing had seemed to acquiesce her nerves, and now things with Adrian just felt so natural. Which wasn't a surprise. Even on their first day as Ladybug and Cat Noir, their teamwork had almost been seamless. Master Fu had been right. They really were meant to be. Marinette just wished he was here now, to be able to see the Ladybug and Cat Noir he had chosen finally happy together. After she finished her pizza, Marinette felt brave enough to lean her head on Adrian's shoulder, and he responded by pulling her to sit in between his legs and letting her lean against his chest. Is this okay, he asked, and Marinette nodded, snuggling into him. This was more than okay. As long as we always sit like this when we watch movies, she said. Might be a bit difficult if we go to the cinema, but definitely when we're at your place. Or mine. You're welcome any time for movies. I'll work on my dad. Marinette nodded. She knew Adrian's relationship with his father was difficult. Well, while we wait for him, you can come over to mine. As in, any time at all. My parents like you a lot. They won't mind. Save sneaking in as Cat Noir for late at night. Really? Marinette tilted her head back to look at her boyfriend. The sneaking in part? No, the being able to come over at any time. Your parents really won't mind? She smiled. Of course not. And if you wanted, you could come over on Christmas Eve. The bakery is always super busy in the morning. An extra set of hands would help. And then in the afternoon, when we close, we can all play some games together. And that's what we usually do. But it's okay if you've got plans for Christmas Eve already. Adrian couldn't wipe the smile off his face. I have no plans. My father already told me that he'll be busy. I can come over. His smile got impossibly wider. Thank you for inviting me. I've never had fun on Christmas Eve. And getting to spend it with you? He ducked his head and kissed her on the tip of her nose. I can't wait. Marinette returned his smile. Don't thank me yet. If you're helping out, you'll have to be at the bakery for five in the morning. For you, I'd be there at four. They returned to cuddling and watching the movie. But Marinette didn't want it to end. And neither did Adrian. He knew they'd do this again. He was already planning on going over to his girlfriend's tonight to make a start on their Christmas break homework. And maybe kiss some more, but no one needed to know he was thinking that. As the credits rolled, they both sat up and collected the rest of the food so they could take it up to the Christmas party in their classroom, which definitely would be well underway by now. But Adrian was fine with missing the start. Giving Marinette her present was more important. When they were done packing away the food into the hamper Adrian had brought from home, he turned off a laptop and projector. I'll come back later to tidy the rest, he said. Mr. Haprell said he'd help. I can help too, Marinette said with a smile, and Adrian shook his head as he took her hand again. You don't need to. It was my gift to you, so I should be the one to clean up. He watched as Marinette bit her lip. What's wrong, princess? I just want to spend more time with you. Adrian couldn't help but smile. Well, I was planning on coming over tonight, if that's okay. Marinette nodded straight away. It always is. She bit her lip again. Can we kiss again? She whispered, averting her gaze. Tonight, if you like. She blushed and briefly met his gaze. I meant... now. His heartbeat sped up at her admission. Adrian knew it would have taken a lot for Marinette to ask him. You don't need to ask me, princess. Come here. They were only two words, but they made Marinette melt inside. And she let Adrian pull her closer by the hand, and she went up onto her tiptoes and met him for a kiss. She could feel him smiling against her lips, and she pulled back with a little giggle. What? Adrian asked. Nothing. I just never thought I'd get to do this. Me neither, Adrian said with a smile. I'm sorry that you had to wait so long for me. Don't be. You weren't ready, and you were worth waiting for. After one last kiss, Adrian picked up the hamper and marinate the plastic box, and they finally left the boiler room. The courtyard was empty since it was too cold to be outside for any length of time right now, but it wasn't quiet. Christmas songs could be heard playing from each of the classrooms, and even though the doors and windows muffled the sounds, they all seemed to melt together in a weird, jolly-sounding remix. Guess we must have started with the party, Marinette said. It was worth it. 
They shared a smile and then went upstairs together, and outside their classroom were Mark and Nathaniel. They were both dressed more formally than usual, and they were holding hands too. Mark noticed them first and he gave them both a bright smile. Hey! Oh! His gaze was focused on Adrian and Marinette's joined hands. Are you two? Adrian nodded and pulled Marinette closer to him. We are. Mark let out a happy squeal. We've all been waiting forever for you two to finally realise how you felt. Not as long as we have, Marinette said, leaning into Adrian's side. And are you two? Nathaniel pulled Mark closer to him as Adrian had done with Marinette. Yes, but it took him being a kumatai for me to finally tell him. Mark's face dropped. It's okay, I forgive you. A ladybug helped us, although I do feel bad for freezing count the wall. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't have minded, Adrian said. And then he and Marinette finally went into the classroom. Textbooks and tablets usually sat on the desk, but now they were replaced with plates of party food and different kinds of drinks, and Nino had put his DJing setup on Miss Bustier's desk. The classroom was filled with Christmas music, and the main lights had been turned off, the room now only lit by the fairy lights they decorated with. Alia was standing with Nino, the couple laughing with each other, and the rest of their classmates were dotted around unwrapping their secret Santa presents. Some of them looked happy, some of them looked less than that, including Lila. Thankfully, Miss Bustier spotted them first and came over to Adrian and Marinette. Is everything okay, you two? The party started an hour ago. It's fine, miss. I was giving Marinette her secret Santa present. You got Marinette for secret Santa, Lila said from behind them, and the couple turned around to face her. She was smiling, but her lips were turned up slightly in a sneer. She clearly wasn't happy about it. That's such a shame. Marinette wanted to shrivel into Adrian's side, but her boyfriend stood his ground. Why would it be a shame that I got the girl I'm in love with for Secret Santa? He said it loud enough that the rest of the class could hear, Rose letting out a little shriek somewhere in the room, and Lila looked like she had been slapped. The model simply handed Lila the hamper full of food, and Marinette tried not to look smug as Adrian led her away to the desk at the back of the classroom where it was quieter. I thought your stance was not to call her out at all, Marinette said as they sat down together. I didn't call her out. I simply told her who I was in love with. He raised their joined hands and gently kissed her knuckles. Can I have my gift now? Marinette handed the small plastic box over to him. It's not as good as what you did for me, but I still hope you like it. Adrian took the lid off and he couldn't stop smiling at what he saw. Inside were two gingerbread cookies. One I still look like Ladybug, the other Cat Noir, but without their masks. This is how I was going to tell you my identity, Marinette whispered. They were on their own at the back of the room, since everyone else was at the front where the music was louder but she couldn't risk anyone else finding out she was Ladybug. I wouldn't be able to tell you properly because I get nervous. I thought this would be better. Adrian leaned over and kissed her on the cheek. I love it. They're perfect. Really? Marina asked, fiddling with the hem of her pink skirt. She knew Adrian wouldn't lie to her unless it was absolutely necessary, but it didn't mean her anxiety didn't make her insecure. It's not as good as what you did for me. Princess, these are perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better first secret Santa gift. But we sadly have to eat them before the class sees them, or they'll know too. Marinette watched as Adrian took the ladybug out of the box and immediately bit her head off, and she laughed, then carefully wiped away the crumbs from around his mouth. Good? she asked. He nodded as he chewed. Never had gingerbread before. I like it, but perhaps I only like it because it's ladybug shaped. Marinette laughed again and took the cat noir out of the box, then chomped his head off too. Adrian gasped, but mirth was shining in his eyes. You've just snapped your boyfriend's neck. Tell me, how do you feel? She giggled and placed the cat noir back in the box so Adrian could eat the rest later. I feel great. I know he'd do anything for me. Adrian put the box to one side and wrapped an arm around Marinette's waist. Just say the word and I'm there. I know. Feeling brave, Marinette kissed him on the cheek, but then pulled back with a yawn. Sorry, the Akuma fight last night was really tiring and I couldn't get to sleep after talking to you. He nodded in understanding. Why don't you shut your eyes for a bit? You probably won't be able to sleep in here, but you should get some rest, just in case another Akuma happens. Marinette agreed and placed her head on Adrian's shoulders, and then shut her eyes. But despite the music and laughter of their classmates, she was asleep within a few minutes. She really must have been exhausted, Adrian supposed, and he leant his head on top of Marinette's. A little nap wouldn't hurt him either. That's how Alia found them ten minutes later, asleep together at the back of the classroom, soft snores escaping their mouths. They were so cute together. She'd always known they would be, even before finding out their identities. Them being Ladybug and Cat Noir just made everything so much more perfect.
She brought out her phone and took a few pictures of them asleep against each other. And when she had some good shots, Ali pocketed her phone and made her way back over to Nino. She hadn't actually got a present for Marinette or Adrian yet, but she was sure the new couple would both appreciate a framed photo of them looking adorable together for Christmas.